This depiction is dangerous. Come on, ain't it? I'm cutting it. Butchery, sadism, murder. A wave of depraved and corrupt horror video. Confusing fiction with reality. Doug Smart, producer, high dent investment films. Maybe Enid could watch my latest Frederick North submission. Wanted a woman's eye on this film. Rory, what's happening? Neve, how are you? I'm good. I'm in a quarantine hotel at the moment. Oh, where is this hotel? Well, I tell you what's in the background, and that is Buckingham Palace. So I could probably guess it's London. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> what's got you in London? Well, I live in London, but I've just come back from South Africa. So I'm doing the mandatory um, 10 day quarantine. South Africa was Raised by Wolves season two? Season two, correct. How, how is filming such a massive show under quarantine rules? E- not easier than I expected, but it's, um, I can't imagine the the planning that has to go into that. Like we were, you know, we're the last kind of people to be brought over as in the actors and um, you, you become incredibly aware of how much you have to cover yourself and in bubble wrap so that you don't catch this because if you get sick the whole production shuts yeah. down so you you become more aware of just how other people are reliant on you yeah i will circle back around to race by wolves because i absolutely loved the first season but uh we are to talk about censor first of all um and the reason the singular reason i knew this film was going to like hit right one of my favorite critic shows is a show called Red Letter Media. And they did an entire episode focused on censor. Yes. Uh, and that's how I knew it was like, this is going to hit right with horror fans. Are you a horror fan? Yes. You are. What's your favorite yeah. scary movie? I'm going to, th- people are going to be like, it's not a horror film. Go the on. Jaws. That's totally fine. You know who else, it, it, you know who else thinks uh, Jaws is their favorite scary movie? Ooh. Emily Blunt. There we go. Cindy Here? and Emily, we're on it. You're like this, you're in great company. That so. was the last movie, actually. Emily's film is the last movie I saw in the cinema, which was A Quiet Place 2. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a good, that's a good one, too. Um, it's really good, it's really good. It scared the life out of me. <laughs> yeah. So did Censor, though. Censor, like, dug its way in uh, and was properly unsettling. Like, I mean this as a compliment. It is a feel-bad film. <laughs> like, <laughs> when, when it was over, I was like, right, I need to watch, like, 10 episodes of American Dad or something just to balance out uh, was it a particularly grueling one for you? No, not not particularly. But that's because I was the director. Prano is the funniest human being and the kindest human being I've I've had the joy of working with. Um, so kind of basically when we're not when we're not rolling, you know, we've had those moments where you have to try and get into it. So you're you're going to be focused and present, but like. We had a lot of fun making this movie. Um, and Michael Smiley, who plays Doug Smart in it, is mm. the, he comes in and he's he never stops talking and he's telling you all these stories and cracking jokes. And then he'll show up and be in the scene and totally present. Um, but I think it's good. I think that is really important, I think, for a film like this, where, as you said, it really gets under your skin and it's this quite an emotional journey, uh, especially for, for my character to be able to have that respite. Yeah. Otherwise, I think you could actually turn out, turn mental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it, there is, um, there seems to be like a bit of a through line with some of your work in that it is uh, very darkly emotional. Like I, I loved Cam at Horses. I looking at uh, the stuff that I'm reading about Deceit, it looks heavy going as well like is that um do you find yourself kind of not and even like raised by wolves when you when you hear the premise you're like oh it's androids and they're raising kids and then when you watch it you're like oh this, this is so much it's like a hard sci-fi and essentially it's like hard horror is that's mm. the stuff that you're do you find yourself naturally drawn or drawn to kind of i guess the the grittier stuff yeah i think i am i think it's but there's always a mix in it i think it's I think I'm always drawn to a the story, but the characters. And if I can root, if I can root it in in the truth, and um, 
I just like for me acting is incredibly cathartic and it's the most present thing that I've experienced so I think to to be able to be given the opportunity to research these characters and especially characters that make really tough decisions and find find out how someone would get to that point is is really rewarding I find as, as an actor. Uh, and as um, kind of a, an, an Irish breakout star lately, like you, it's 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 great. Not just because I know you from before we were both <laughs> doing this, but just as someone who enjoys seeing <clears throat> Irish talent kind of have that rise and get kind of international uh, recognition. Do you still find yourself like looking back at Irish talents, Irish films? Like, do you st- are you still kind of keeping a finger on the pulse on what is happening here? as Absolutely. well or yeah. like do, do you would you see yourself like wanting to come back to Ireland much to continue like being a part of Irish filmmaking yeah I think what Ireland Ireland is producing some of the some of the best um some amazing films in the tv at the moment I think I watched while I was out in Cape Town I watched Smother and not just because one of my best friends Shauna is Shauna Kerslake is in it but where we're at, at now in regards studios and the the like as you said the talent there's so so many amazing writers and directors that are in Ireland at the moment and actors there's just an abundance of of talent that of course I want to come back and, and work and work there um yeah and plus it's the handy of get my family off my case <laughs> to see them more yeah, it's, it's a paid excuse to see your family. So that, yeah. that works out. Um, just regards to your stuff in South Africa, like, again, when you, when you, I guess, will get the call and say, hey, guess what? You definitely are going to be working with Ridley Scott now. Like, that's, that has to be off the charts, kind of exciting. Yeah, that was, I was filming in Ireland when I got that call. I was doing the, the last ride and uh, I was in this hotel and I just, I must have put a hole in the ground. Just, I was walking up and down just every now and again, I forget that I wasn't about to go and work with Ridley Scott. And then all of a sudden I remember and it would come back tenfold and my heart would be going a hundred miles an hour and I'd start to get emotional. And and then you'd forget again. And then you, it was just, it was such a, yeah, it was such an amazing feeling. And and then you begin to go, oh God, are you sure now? You sure he's, you sure he's, my, <laughs> sure he's me. You sure he's the, sure he, we, we, and then you start to get that imposter syndrome and it wasn't until so Ridley directed the first first couple of episodes and then we took a break. And I think I'm, I am allowed to say this now. And But my character was originally meant to die in the fifth episode of the first season. Um, and Ridley and Aaron Gomolowski, who's the, the show creator, they rang me during, during the break of when we shot the first couple of episodes and said, look, we don't want to kill you. We don't want to kill you off. We really love, we really love what you're doing. And um, how do you feel? And you're kind of going like, what? <laughs> yes, of course I would love to stay. So that was a, such a massive confidence boost to kind of go, okay, right. Obviously I'm not crap. <laughs> <laughs> that is like, I'm trying to think of like, no, I can't think of anything. That's like the nicest compliment. Yeah. You're like, hey, we're not going to kill you off, as it turns yeah. out. We want, to, we want to keep you on yeah. from, like, literally one of the best, biggest directors in the world. Yeah. That's that's fantastic. Is he hanging around much for season two? He's, he's well, he's a producer on it. But, um, like, the man has, I think he really wanted to come back, and uh, but he's doing, like, six different movies. He was He was shooting Gucci at the time. And he would check in with us and phone us up to say that, you know, he's watching everything and would, was was very heavily involved and had a huge say in a lot of stuff. So it's, you very much feel like this is still a Ridley Scott show, mm. you know? Yeah, plus like, wasn't he doing The Last Duel, which was the filmed last here? Jewel. He's doing, and he did Gucci. And then I think he's going on to do something about um, Christopher, not Christopher Columbus, no. Napoleon or something like that he's just he's, he's doing man. he's doing him like it's almost like he has he has the energy of when he started out in the industry yeah because I know in his like, 80s it's 
uh, yeah, like it, just thinking about his work day, I'm like, I'm already tired. I'm going, I'm going to go back to bed. I think just comparatively, it's just, it's no, <laughs> it's, no. I just don't have enough <laughs> energy. Um, can we talk a little bit about deceit? Yes. The, again, it's, it, 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 I can imagine this is going to be one of those Twitter blow up uh, uh, conversations. I can see people reacting to this in real time. Uh, and I think it's perfect that it's four episodes because that's like mm. nice and like it's it's going to get everyone's attention for a specific amount of time. Mm-hmm. But are you are you excited for that to kind of I know it's it's a, again, it's quite a dark story, but are you excited for that to come out? Yes, I, I'm like this was a show where I, I was unfamiliar about the Rachel Nicole story. It's based off of um it's based off the investigation into Rachel McCall's murder. So I think I was, I was a baby at the time of, of that whole event. And it's the, it's the, was the biggest investigation in metropolitan police history. Um, and so I think for people, this will have a very profound effect on them because it is, it is something that a lot of people live through. Mm-hmm. Um, it's short on it. It's, it's the, you know, the false accusation of Colin Stagg, who was put on trial for the, for the murder of, of Rachel's Rachel McCall's story. And ultimately it follows this character of Sadie Byrne, who was at the center of this investigation. She was undercover uh, detective and was, was sent undercover to, to lure out Colin Stagg. And um, so it's, it's following her. So yeah, it's, a, it's Amelia, who's our writer. She's, she's really created an amazing story where every, when I was reading it, every episode leaves you on a cliffhanger that you want, you want to watch the next one. But I think it's the kind of show that people will watch it and take a minute and digest it. It's, there's a lot happening in it. And um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm excited for people to see it, but also, as you said, I think it's, it could, it, it's going to open up, I think a lot of conversations as to the way in which, women in particular were were treated in at that time yeah yeah like just reading this the synopsis and reading like the people who are involved it does sound like a very uh, exciting project just both for you but also uh, for the viewer as well um mm. and just one last question if that's okay Neve. yeah because we're pals um <laughs> it is one of the the greatest aspects of seeing uh, iris talent is whenever they have Whenever they get noticed, you see them plucked by Hollywood almost immediately. It's like you just have to look at Barry and he's he's in the Batman and he's in the Eternals in yeah. the same year. Yeah. Uh, you you like true history, you can see it happening. I personally find it remarkable that you haven't already been like, oh yeah, I'm in, you know, the big huge thing that's coming up. Unless, of course, you are in a big huge thing that's coming <laughs> up. And maybe you'd like to potentially talk about that i'm i'm listen i'm i'm talking to you about two projects that i just did in the last year (laughs) (laughs) Um, let's let's put it another way then is there is there anything out there that like you you would be excited to be a part of is there like oh yeah i definitely could see myself being in that i'd love to do a western oh yeah i don't know if this won't be made but i just i would i would love to just be in a western and like I grew up on horses and I, I remember I was like my first job I was cast in uh, Vikings and I was like of course they've read my resume they know that I'm a confident horse rider <laughs> and then I'm like Fisher Woman number one <laughs> he's like standing on a beach and I'm like okay um but yeah I'd love to I'd love to do a western especially a female-led western there's not, yeah. not many of them true no. mm. uh, what was the other one Jane Jane got a gun with the Jane got a gun, yeah there's not a huge amount of them, that's true. Uh, or you could do Westworld. Westworld, yeah. Potentially. I'd love to do something that is is new, you know. Mm. That, you know, to to be this to be the start. Like that's why I was so excited when I was cast in Raised by Wolves, because this was something no one had seen before. Um, and yeah. obviously the expectations are incredibly high because it's Ridley Scott and you are entering that Ridley world. So to be a part of something new was always incredibly exciting. Yeah, fantastic. Neve, thank you so much for your time today. Enjoy 
quarantine. Thank um, you. I hope th- this at least helps time go by a it little bit faster. The amount of, like, the, my friends keep on, like, sending me stuff. I feel like it's, like, it's my birthday or it's Christmas or something. I keep on getting sent, like, I did, like, an escape room thing yesterday um, and all these little activities. But I'm I'm really loving this time where I, I get to decompress. Did you escape the room? I did, yeah. I oh. might have used a few clues, but I got out. Room. You get out of that room, <laughs> not, but not this, this room. room. <laughs> no, otherwise I get into a lot of trouble. <laughs> Cheers, Neve. People think that I create horror. Horror is already out there in all of us.